Hey BZB Gear fans, my, hey BZB Gear fans, my name is Matt and today we're going to be continuing our little series on some of the uh, broadcasting software and specifically how to uh, potentially get the most out of your PTZ cameras, especially our BZB Gear cameras when it comes to stuff like exposure and lighting. So uh, let's go ahead and hop into this. Things first, uh, obviously I have two cameras set up here, uh, but we're going to go ahead and open up our web, our web browser here and we're going to be looking for OBS color scopes. Uh, this is going to bring up the color monitor plugin for OBS. So we're just going to take a quick look at this. Pretty simple. We're just going to go to downloads and you're going to find the proper uh, download for your, um, for your operating system on your computer. We're running Windows 64. So we're just going to go ahead and find that real quick. And then we're going to go ahead and make sure that we want to download it. One really quick thing to mention is uh, this will depend on what version of OBS you are using. So whether that's the uh, most up to date, whether that's for example, 28 or above or uh, 27 or below. So just make sure that you pick the right one based off of those. Uh, you can go ahead and click on these little drop downs to figure out which one we're using. For us, we're using uh, 28 or excuse me, 29. So we're going to go with the 28 or later version. So we'll go ahead and download that. Now that we have it downloaded, I'm going to go ahead and open up my OBS file. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and open up another window of Explorer, so that way I have my downloads here. And all I'm going to do is just open up the uh, OBS color monitor, uh, and then open up the plugins, copy the files, throw them in my OBS uh, folder, just like I'm showing on the screen right now. And once you have that done, then we can move on to the next step. Pretty simple and easy process. Uh, doesn't take very long. Uh, there's a little bit of easier ways to do it, but right now I am just remoting into another computer, so we got to do it the way we got to do it. But very, very quick, painless, and easy to do, and it is going to give you some extra capabilities that are going to be quite valuable when it comes to managing exposure for your cameras. Okay, so now that we have OBS open, what we're going to go ahead and do is go to the tools. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and select a new scope doc. You can title it whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave it as scope doc. Once you've done that, you're going to go ahead and get this. So we can go ahead and drag that around anywhere that we want. As you can see, we can dock it to different things. Uh, I'm not going to put it on the top. I'm just going to elect to put it over here on the side. And from here, we can decide what scopes we want to have, which ones we don't wanna have, uh, but we can go ahead and talk about that here in a little bit. All right, so now that I have it over here docked on the left-hand side, we can go ahead and right-click and uh, pick which ones we want to have, which scopes we want, and which ones we don't. Uh, for this, really, I'm just going to recommend just having the waveform. That's what's going to be the most valuable for when it comes to determining exposure. And we're going to go ahead and go into settings for this. So go into properties. And you can tune the properties individually for all of these. You have different options, RGB, Luma, uh, Chroma, uh, YUV. But realistically, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to leave it on Luma. Luma is just going to be the basic waveform that we're going to use for this. Uh, you don't really need to do too much into other things. Um, but Luma is what we want to use. So when it comes to determining proper exposure for um, your camera, there's a lot of different things that we can go over. But really, uh, what this scope does is it does a few things. It's going to tell you what highlights are being overdone and what uh, blacks or darks in the picture are getting crushed. So really, what you ideally want to do is anything on the very high portion of that, you want it to stay under typically the 100 line. And anything on the bottom of that, you want it to stay above the, uh, the zero line. You don't want it to go underneath. If it's going underneath, you're losing a lot of detail because those blacks are getting crushed. And if the highlights are uh, going above the 100 as well, then those are getting washed out. So now that we have this up and running, we're going to go ahead and go to our camera view here and our web GUI, and we're going to go to video parameters. There's a few things that we need to establish real quick. So one of the big things when it comes to getting your exposure set right, is you wanna make sure that your shutter speed is going to be double uh, the amount of your frame rate. So if we're at 30 FPS, we want it to be one over 60. Um, iris is going to be uh, essentially the mechanical thing 
uh, that closes before the sensor uh, in the camera to let more light in or less light in. Uh, so if it closes, that's less light that is let in. If it's uh, opened, then obviously you get more. So when it comes to gain, gain is going to be increasing the sensitivity of the sensor. So really what happens when you want to check the exposure and make sure that you have perfect exposure is you're going to be doing a bit of a dance with a bunch of these settings. So uh, iris and um, gain, all that stuff. I typically wanna leave the gain as low as possible, if possible. And I wanna have the iris as open as I can, but not too open. So those are the, going to be the two things that I would use first to control the brightness of the image. So if it's too bright, I would go to closing the iris first, um, or rather, actually, I would, <laughs> let me rephrase that. If it's too bright, what I would do first is I would actually um, turn down the gain as much as possible. And then, uh, because what happens is if you have too much gain in your image, you get a lot of digital noise. So always, always try and leave that as low as possible. I would touch gain probably one of the last settings that I would touch. Um, and I would try and control most of it through the iris. So as you can see here, I'm kind of bouncing back and forth, playing with some of the, um, the settings here. Um, brightness, uh, you're not going to, when, when it comes to brightness as a setting, um, it's not going to improve the brightness in under lit areas. It's just going to kind of uh, help bring the highlights up a little bit. Um, and when you're messing with contrast, you're essentially either bringing the um, the highlights and the lows, like the, the blacks of the image, closer together, or you're moving them further apart. So when you're bringing them closer together, it gets desaturated a little bit, um, but when you move them further apart, then obviously you get more of a um, complete looking image. So this is just kind of something that you have to play with a little bit um, to get a perfect thing. Now, what I would recommend is I would highly recommend, besides just using this tool, because this is a great tool to kind of get you a visual representation of where you need to, to be if your eye, um, like judging the differences of color and exposure by eye is something that's difficult for you. This is a 110% a great tool. But what I would really recommend is uh, I actually did a kind of a deep dive on exposure, um, kind of setting camera colors, all of that stuff through the web GUI and everything uh, on our channel before. So I would highly recommend you go ahead and check that out. Um, I'll go ahead and put a link up in the top, but that pretty much does it. Uh, as you can see, um, it's a little bit difficult to get the, uh, to get it perfectly dialed in here. And that's because what we're doing is we're using a, um, basically a, a contrast chart as our exposure thing. Um, so what I would actually recommend if you were to go ahead and do this for yourself is I would recommend that you get someone in front of the camera to do it because when you're using a uh, scope like this, um, it's really, really uh, tuned mostly around getting skin tones correct. So I would highly recommend using a person to set exposure and not necessarily an object, but this is just an easy way for me to show it to you um, and kind of encourage you to play around with these things. So that just about does it. Like I said, I really, really recommend that you guys go ahead and check out my Videographer 101 uh, series, I believe is what I titled it. But uh, again, I'll go ahead and link it up here. Go ahead and check those out. Uh, very, very good resource. It'll tell you kind of, um, it goes way more in depth than this. This is just a quick showing off of a tool that is available to you through OBS that can help you nail the right exposure and brightness for your image. So again, keep tuned. We have more of these coming along. Uh, I know streaming and kind of running broadcast is a big, big thing right now. So uh, we have more coming along the line, like how to match two different cameras so that way the, the image looks the same uh, between the two color wise and some other things like ProPresenter, how to stream in 4K, other things along those lines. So. We'll see you guys next time.